Well, welcome back, everybody. You may have seen our next guest on the Ricky Lake Show last week when Ricky took a closer look at the sleeping disorder narcolepsy. Monica Gao is the founder of Wake Up Narcolepsy. Her teenage son suffers from the disorder, and she joins us this morning with Dr. Kenneth Sassauer of Mass General Hospital, neuro neurologist. Thank you both for being here today. Thank so, you. first off, we want to explain to folks narcolepsy and cataplexy. What exactly are these two conditions? Narcolepsy is a neurological sleep wake medical disorder. Mm -hmm. It's a lifelong disorder. And cataplexy is a symptom of narcolepsy. And with cataplexy, people with, who experience emotion might lose muscle tone in their legs and collapse. Um, their arms might lose muscle tone. And oftentimes, their neck will slack and give out. Wow. And your son was diagnosed with, with both of these conditions? Correct. And how old's your son? Right now, he's 15. 15. So this is something you know you might not think of young, younger uh, teenagers, younger kids dealing with this stuff, but how, how was that for him? What did he actually suffer through and go through with this? Well, with the narcolepsy, he was sleeping all the time, up to 18 hours. Wow. He was diagnosed, thankfully, only three months after the first onset of symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, and he was falling all of the time, and the doctors recommended we take video of him because they couldn't figure out what was going on. So we had to take video of him with experiencing the cataplexy. Wow. And uh, Dr. Sassauer, like, how common is this? And, and you know, is this something a lot of families are dealing with and we're learning more and more about it now? I mean, because it's something you hear about narcolepsy. I told you I hadn't heard about cataplexy before. Right. How common is it? It's, uh, it occurs in about uh, less than 1% of the population. Okay. But I think, you know, as, uh, as Monica and were suggesting, that they, it may be more common than we used to think. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's usually characterized by sort of daytime sleepiness, sleepiness like Monica mentioned, and, uh, and the cataplexy. And essentially what's happening is that uh, folks are having REM sleep or dream sleep and sort of intruding into their daytime um, uh, behaviors. So in other words, somebody could be actually awake and they could actually see things um, or even hear things and it'd be a function of being sort of dream sleep getting into the wakeful state. So this is something, I mean, it's like your son, for example, it was out of his control. Mm -hmm. when, how did you start noticing this was going on? Because he's not purposely falling asleep because he just wants to take a nap. I mean, he really couldn't control these issues. Right. Well, the onset age for typical narcolepsy is between 10 and 15. Ah, OK. Which most people think of it as a, an adult medical disorder. Mm -hmm. um, and he was sleeping a little bit at a time, riding in a car, fell asleep on the floor. The teacher called me from school and said he was asleep. And he, with all the sleeping and the falling down, we just started, you know, you know, 20 doctor visits later with yeah. different doctors, we, we figured out what it was. And also, we, he had two misdiagnoses in the middle of that three months as well. Really? So you, so you mm -hmm. knew something was wrong. Oh, yeah. It was just getting to the bottom of what Correct. it was. And yes. then that's how you guys ended up, uh, you know, you found out what the, the issue was. And what do you do to start to, to treat it once, you, uh, once it's diagnosed? Well, fortunately, there's, uh, there's both uh, so what we refer to as sleep hygiene, just good recommendations on how to sleep. And, and Tom, Tom and it was a good sleeper. Thanks to his parents, they sort of very devoted advocates mm -hmm. um, to his care. And then there is medication, fortunately, now that can help uh, uh, folks like Tom stay awake and even a medication that people take at nighttime to improve the, the quality of sleep at nighttime. So there are things that can be done. Um, and I guess the big important thing is to sort of rule out other possibilities mm -hmm. of things that make one sleepy, um, things that were, were not in the case of Tom, who was a per otherwise a perfectly well-developed uh, mm -hmm. guy, but I mean things with, like depression and thyroid problems okay. and low blood sugar yeah. and anemia, things like that. Ruling so, stuff yeah. out. And you know, to the effect of um, caring for it, treating it. You started Wake Up Narcolepsy. You want people to know about this. So what exactly are you doing with that and how can people get involved? Well, after going through what he had to go through to get diagnosed and learning that people wait eight to 10 years usually to get diagnosed, mm -hmm. we decided that we needed to raise awareness. So we have awareness programs. We have awareness events and we have fundraising programs as well. And did you want to do that so that other people wouldn't have to, to suffer through it and, and wait so long? So that children, um, getting them diagnosed is the big step. Getting them treated um, with the proper medication is the second big step. Um, and nowadays, in the past 10 years, there's medicine out there that allows him to go to school and to get decent grades. And this is newer medication um, that wasn't there in the past. Um, Jazz Pharmaceuticals and Teva Pharmaceuticals have just really 
improved with the medication and, and allow for high functioning. Well, this is great information, and if, if your some child's acting, something's going on like this, mm -hmm. you want to definitely pay attention and get the help you Absolutely. need. Correct. All right. Yes. Well, Monica, Dr. Sassauer, thank you both so much great. for coming. A very interesting topic to talk okay. about. All right. Thank you.